Hello, I'm Denise LaFrance coming up on this edition of City Beat. The heat is something we all know, and Las Cruces is undergoing a series of studies that relate to increasing temperatures, the urban heat island effect, and socioeconomic factors regarding heat. We'll show you what the studies measure. The city of Las Cruces now manages the Rio Grande Theater, a look at some of the programming that's occurring now and what we could see in the future. Young Park is home to the city's newest playground structure, this one for children with all abilities, a tour of the new all-inclusive playground. And the city has a new mission statement and strategic plan. We sit down with the city manager to learn why these changes are so important. Welcome to City Beat for the month of August. It affects us here in the desert, heat. But exactly how does it affect us? The city sustainability officers working with Arizona State University and NASA to get a real look at how heat affects us, even from our building codes and policies. CLC TV's Jennifer Martinez helps explain how a temperature study might affect change in the future. Three years ago, a study in Las Cruces revealed there were 257,000 trees within the 44 square miles of Las Cruces, meaning a tree canopy of only 3.7%. With so little shade and a growing Las Cruces, the potential for higher temperatures on the surface in the future also increases. As the city grows, it, it increases the amount of asphalt and concrete that exists. And we need to recognize that as as climate is changing, that we have to address these impacts of urban development. We want to make the city walkable. We want to make it safe. Arizona State University and the Maricopa County Department of Public Health collaborated through the NASA DEVELOP program, a part of NASA's Applied Sciences program, which uses Earth observations to help global decision making, to study the heat island effect in Las Cruces, where the inner city is warmer than its surroundings, and where those residents might be more affected by the heat. Asphalt concrete and cinder block homes serve as a heat sink uh, and, and in turn radiate heat out into the atmosphere. But when we had our heat spell uh, this summer, it was 108 degrees, but in the center city, it reached 113. And this can be very impactful for uh, different vulnerable populations, such as people that are under five, over 65, have chronic illnesses, or are disabled. NASA satellite mapping could show which neighborhoods need help to cool off. The city is taking this study a step further with surface thermometers to look at specific locations to see the localized impact where people are more likely to be, like at bus stops, parks, and downtown. This is, this project is a part of a larger initiative. So the urban heat island mapping started in June and will end in August. The thermometer placement is happening now and that will run through December. We're also taking, um, uh, taking on a special project in the Nevada corridor where uh, on Nevada Street we will be adding a bunch of shade trees to that area. So we'll create a cool tree-lined corridor for people to walk up and down or bicycle. The findings from the NASA developed project could lead to new policies or standards like more trees, a greater use of highly porous concrete and alternative locations for bus stops. It provides a visual map uh, of what the, where the problems are located and why, and that will propel policy decisions. With temperatures into the triple digits each summer, these studies can certainly bring some relief to those affected the most. For City Beat, I'm Jennifer Martinez. Thank you, Jen. The thermometers the city has purchased can collect data for several years, taking an hourly reading each day. The study is currently underway and the results will surely be presented to City Council once complete. The city's Visit Las Cruces staff has taken over much of the responsibility of the Rio Grande Theater. Programming already includes a children's matinee series and classic movie series in addition to other specialty programs. We'll show you what theater visitors can expect of the new management and the changes they may see. I think this theater has always been uh, the hallmark of downtown. Besides being the hallmark of downtown, we want it to be the center for entertainment for people to come down and have a good time. 
Well, when we were given the Rio Grande Theater to manage, we were very excited. We had lots of ideas. We still do. We're working on a lot of things. You know, a little nervous. We wanted to make sure that uh, we upheld the the idea of the Rio Grande Theater and what it means to Las Cruces in downtown. Well, first of all, we have our uh, classic film series. Uh, we're also doing a kids' matinee on uh, Saturdays as well, one Saturday a month. And once again, it's nice to see this theater uh, with lots of noises here on Saturdays with, with parents and kids. And then there's going to be a lot of special events that are going on. Our first one being uh, with Selena, uh, uh, a cover of Selena coming in, so that should be a lot of fun as well. Every Thursday night we have a band, uh, we're calling it uh, the Thursday Night Jam Sessions, and we have all sorts of genres from rock, country, jazz, Americana, you name it, we got it. We usually plan about two months out, uh, so if you're a band or you're a singer or know somebody who's in a band, just let us know and we'll work to see if we can get you in. This is not my theater or the city's theater, it's the people's theater. And it's important for us to present it, to let people know that they're welcome into this theater. Uh, get the uh, Visit Las Cruces app and, and get the full entire schedule or go online and check it out because there's going to be a lot of activity happening here every week. The city had advertised the position of venue manager to handle the affairs of the theater in June. Applications are now being reviewed. A lighting tech and sound engineer have already been contracted. If you have a child with special needs, you may know the difficulty of allowing your child to grow in place simply because of a lack of resources or infrastructure. The Parks and Recreation Department heard the requests of residents and have moved forward with an all-inclusive play environment. My name is Dana Garcia. I'm a special needs advocate. Um, I was born and raised here in Las Cruces. Uh, when Soraya was six days old, uh, she had two strokes. Um, so she was airlifted to Albuquerque. We lived there for about 10 years and then we returned back home. We are very, very happy that this park has come about. Um, it was a huge struggle in the progress, but at the end of the day, I mean, we finally have this inclusive playground here. This is called the Young Park Inclusive Playground, and the idea is that it includes um, some features for all children. And um, so it, we try to design it so that each um, children of all abilities will have something to, that can be specially for them. Maybe not every single feature will address the needs of every single child, but this play apparatus, the playground, will have um, some features that can be appropriate for all sorts of children. We've got musical instruments, we've got ramps for to get um, children in wheelchairs up off of the surface so they can actually get into the playground. We've got um, spinners, we've got bobble riders, so different kinds of play apparatus for different kinds of children. Uh, you can hear the music in the background, it's terrific. The state legislative grant was about $75,000. Um, Parks then contributed about um, $255,000, if I'm recalling correctly. Also, we received a donation from the Pickwick Stores Incorporated um, to the tune of about $10,000 in contribution for this project. And also, um, Beryl Williams, a local Boy Scout, um, integrated his Eagle Scout project with the inclusive playground um, so that he solicited or uh, uh, sought donations um, for a, to bring a piece of equipment into the playground and then his troop is going to install that piece of equipment also. One, one is visual, one is auditorial, and one is tactile, um, sensory stimulation. 
So they have audio, which is kind of like the bells. And another one is these marbles, which is tactile. I, yeah, tactile. And then um, gears. The reason I think it's a it's a really positive thing for this park and for the city is because on this south side of town, we don't have a lot of new structures, lots of new facilities. A lot of things are going up north, you know, the Metro Verde areas, um, you know, lots of work being done in Veterans Park with the new monuments. So this is a, a very big positive for the south side of town. The city thanks the state legislature and Pickwick for helping to fund the inclusive playground. There's one more month of movies in the park and the city's closure schedule for Labor Day are just ahead in our city minute. Movies in the park has two showings in September. On the 9th, it's the BFG and on the 23rd, the movie is Finding Dory. Both movies begin at dusk at Young Park. If you need more information, contact Parks and Recreation at 541-2550. Most city offices will be closed for the September 4th Labor Day holiday. The city's outdoor pools, however, will have one last free swim day on this day. Both the East Mesa Baton Memorial and Lobs pools will be open from noon to 3 and again from 3.30 to 6.30. To see a complete list of the closures, head to lost-cruces.org slash news. If you're interested in running for city council, the deadline for returning packets to the city clerk is 5 p.m. on September 25th. Candidate packets are available on the city's website, lost-cruces.org. This year's municipal election is on Tuesday, November 7th. Council districts up for election are District 3, 5, and 6. The city of Las Cruces is in the process of implementing a new five-year strategic plan. The strategic plan is a long-term planning tool to assist city council, administration, and staff identify community priorities and budget accordingly. Here with more on how the new strategic plan will benefit the community is CLC TV's Udell V. Hill with this month's ASTA. Hello and welcome. Our guest for this edition of ASTA is Las Cruces City Manager Stuart Ede. Stuart, thank you for joining us on ASTA. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. All righty. So why is it important for the City of Las Cruces to have a strategic plan? Well, it's really important to have a strategic plan so that the city and the administrative piece can really focus on those policy priorities of mayor and council. Mayor and council have done a fantastic job of providing leadership to articulate what it is that they want to see happen over the next five years. And so why is having a strategic plan important for the community? How will it benefit the community? It benefits the community because it really focuses our resources on those areas uh, that mayor and council want us to pay particular attention to, to bring uh, the personnel, equipment, uh, resources, and, and really affect some change. Not everything that we do, not all of our operations are covered. Uh, in the strategic plan. Uh, for instance, we don't have anything dedicated specifically to police and fire, but it's not because police and fire aren't important, it's because uh, they're doing a fantastic job, uh, we want to maintain what we have, we want to maintain those critical services, but really what we're looking at with the strategic plan is a chance to focus on those areas that we need to prioritize and bring resources to to affect a good positive change and ultimately a positive outcome that will benefit the community. Very good. Now you've told us how important having the plan is. How was it developed? It was developed through a, a couple days of strategic planning. Uh, we met with mayor and council. We brought in a consulting firm to come in and, and kind of mediate, a, a third party, an outside set of eyes, just to kind of help uh, mayor and council articulate some of those priorities. Uh, they've identified those priorities through many, many uh, community meetings that they've had with their constituents. And so it was really a chance for us to focus those uh, priorities from the community uh, and, and really give mayor and council an opportunity to kind of vet their thoughts and really prioritize uh, those issues that their constituents have uh, have brought to their attention. Okay, very good. Now, the, uh, a very important component of the strategic plan are what we call policy review committees. Can you tell us a little about those? Yes, yeah, so policy and review committees were developed because I, uh, when I was hired, uh, I was asked to, to have mayor and council play a little bit more active role uh, and maybe have a little bit of a deeper dive in some of our administrative efforts. And so, uh, we have a very, very talented mayor and council uh, with tremendous backgrounds, all of them. And so what we want to do is kind of partner up with them, allow them to uh, uh, identify those areas of expertise and interests that they have, 
and allow them to work closer with our administrative staff. We have 10 legislative priority areas and each counselor is responsible for at least two uh, and in some cases three and four. And so uh, it just gives them a chance to work really, really close with administration so that they can articulate their policies, uh, their guidance, uh, their priorities and allow us to focus. And then after that legislative committee meets, uh, that uh, council rep that's on that legislative committee takes that back to the greater body in a work session and explains some of the ideas and outcomes that, uh, that they're looking to create through those committees. All right. Very good. And one last thing, uh, performance-based budgeting, you're, you're moving us towards a performance-based model in the city of Las Cruces government. Can you tell us a little about that? Well, uh, when I was hired, I was asked to, to bring more results uh, to our daily operations and uh, have a measure uh, of everything that we do so that we can assess success. And we can also qualify and quantify what that success is. And so a performance model, we're looking to transition to a high performing organization. And we want everything that we do, we want to identify those critical tasks and what those critical outcomes are, not outputs. We're not mm -hmm. counting the number of things that we do. What we want to do, what we want to assess is what our impact is on the community. And so uh, this year we'll be transitioning to a performance model. Every department's going to have a strategic plan. And it all starts with mayor and council's five-year strategic plan. Everything dovetails from that. We have a new mission statement. Uh, we have our new strategic plan through 2022. And this will allow our departments to focus on mayor and council's priorities and uh, break that down to the department level and then have performance outcomes. And you mentioned the, the uh, new mission statement, and so when City Council passed it, they did it in English and Spanish, and that yes, was indeed. a deliberate move, right, to have it in Spanish as well. Yes, it was. We want to improve our communications with the community, and uh, we have a lot of Spanish speakers uh, in our community, and so we not only translated uh, the mission statement into Spanish, but also the strategic plan, and my understanding is that's the first time that both of those documents have been available in Spanish. So we're really excited about that. We think that's very, very important. Well, wonderful. Well, very informative and Stuart Eat, City Manager for the City of Las Cruces, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Udell. Thanks, Udell. To view the complete mission statement and five-year strategic plan, visit our website, lasjustcruces.org, and click on the View All item in the Hot Topics section. That's all for this episode of City Beat. Remember to tune in for live city council meetings right here Mondays at 1 p.m. You can also find all archived meetings and programs on clctv.com. Plus, we have so much more on our Facebook page. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denise LaFrance.